Welcome parents, guardians, and or family members. We're excited to have you join us as we orient you to our department. We recognize that you could have selected any number of housing options, so we're glad that you chose us. We hope that now, throughout this presentation, and your son or daughter's experience with us, you feel they're in good hands. So let's get started. How many of you know that University of Maryland is a research institution? So then you know that we love facts. Especially for our department, we believe it's important for everyone to know why our on-campus housing is the best option for students to start their college careers. Fact, our immersive environment often facilitates lifelong friendships and connections as residents start on a new adventure. Fact, our living learning programs, mass success peer-to-peer -peer tutoring sessions, and ample study and collaborative spaces support academic success. Fact, our centrally located housing varies in style and price, offering convenience and a variety of cost options. Fact, the security measures, caring staff, and on-call resources offer 24-7 support. And finally, fact, our in-hall programming focuses on everything from academic success to health resources to diversity and inclusion, resulting in student development. These are the facts. But of course, you already knew most of this, and that is what we believe led you here today. So again, thank you. Okay, enough about what brought you here. Let's get into some detail about our program. First, please note that we have some resources in which you can gather and or receive information. You can always visit our website at www.reslife.umd.edu for the most up-to-date information about our department. Additionally, please connect with us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and Pinterest. Of course, as new mediums become popular, we'll expand our presence to remain connected with you and your students. Otherwise, another great resource is the Resident Life Guidebook on the Terp Life app. The guidebook provides general information about our halls and the College Park community. As well, the guidebook is another place we provide updated information on residence halls openings, closings, and fall welcome events. Really quickly, we have our step brochure that you can find information discussed in this presentation. These things combine with our Resident Life email and public inquiry phone number it is our hope that you feel like you have multiple ways to contact and engage with us this year. One area you might have additional questions and or want information is as it pertains to room assignments. Very important, most room assignments will be posted to your student's housing account beginning Wednesday, July 19th. To access room assignment information, you'll want to visit our website, click on the yellow login button, and enter your username and password. Next, click on the Campus Housing Portal to view housing and roommate information. A couple of reminders about room assignments. Rooms are assigned in the order in which housing agreements are received. So if you or your student submitted the housing agreement in February, your student would be assigned to a space before someone who submitted their housing agreement in April. Another thing to remember about housing assignments is that students living in living learning programs are assigned with their program meaning that we follow the guidelines of locations, floors, etc. of each program when assigning students. Make sense? One final note, June 30th was the deadline to make roommate requests and to set other preferences. Remember, if you have questions about any of these steps or processes, we have a ton of information on our website. Additionally, we have a dynamic team in our assignments office that can assist you or your student with questions regarding on-campus housing. Okay, so now on to fall move-in. This year, fall move-in for first year and or new to housing students will happen on Thursday, August 24th and Friday, August 25th. Please note that we provide you with specific times on these two days to help with check-in efficiency and traffic management. Again, your student will be able to see their exact date and time for move-in beginning on July 19th when room assignments become available. A special note for individuals with students in band or other programs with arrival dates before August 24th. Your student will receive information from their program coordinator, so they should be on the lookout for that. Now, a few tips and helpful hints for move-in. First, assemble the ultimate move-in team. We recommend two people in addition to your student for a total of three. This way, while your student goes to check in, 
One individual can move the vehicle to long-term parking while the other remains with the student's belonging in the unloading zone. Once reunited, the team can work together to move the student's belongings from the unloading zone to the student's room. Next move in tip, bring your own hand truck or dolly. See this yellow card in this picture? We have some of these, not 5,000, which is the approximate number of first year and new to housing students moving in during these two days. So it's better to be prepared not to have a card and then be pleasantly surprised if there's one available when you arrive. Speaking of belongings, you may be wondering what we provide versus what your student will need to bring. Each residence hall room comes with a regular standard twin bed, a desk, a desk chair, and a dresser for each resident. Closet space, data jack, phone jack, cable jack, and blinds are available for residents to share. All residence halls have wireless internet and wired ethernet connections. To see photos of various room types and setups, visit our website. Otherwise, here are some more tips and resources to help you with the move-in process. First, positive energy is helpful. Move-in can be exhausting due to heat, traffic, and unforeseen circumstances. It's the start of a new adventure for you and your students. A focus on positivity tends to make the day run smoother. Tip number two, would your student like a nice rug for their room? What about a refrigerator you don't have to store at the end of the year? Check out our vendors that will deliver your selections directly to your student's room before they move in under Vendor Materials on our website. We think you'll find our vendor choices knowledgeable and easy to work with. Our website is also where you will find a list of acceptable items like power strips and Keurigs. Tip four, plan to bring only what students need, not everything they own. And our final tip, tip five, to help you with a successful move-in, let us know how we can help. Our staff will be on hand at each residence hall before, during, and after move-in. Specifically during move-in, professional staff will be wearing department-branded red, black, or white polo shirts. Student staff and student volunteers will be on hand as well in branded t-shirts and can also assist you with the move-in process. So now let's talk about what happens after your student arrives. Transitioning to the topic of roommates, we believe it's important to remind you that a majority of our students have never had to share a space. Consequently, living on campus with one or multiple individuals in close quarters will be a new experience for many of them. As such, we encourage students to make contact with their roommates before they arrive. This can be helpful in making initial connections and negotiating who will contribute what to the shared living space. Facebook, Twitter, and other social media can be helpful in initiating these connections, but be careful about making permanent judgments based on what is posted. We do offer some structured times for roommates to discuss important topics such as privacy, sleep, study hours, use of computer, TV, music, sharing property, and guests, as well as just getting to know more about each other. These opportunities include meet and greets with their resident assistant, fall welcome activities, first floor meetings, and community living agreement conversations. We found that roommate relationships are strongest when the students set clear expectations of each other and when there's good communication, flexibility, and negotiation. Roommate conflicts and major issues occur when there is no desire to compromise. Small issues can become much larger when roommates refuse to talk to each other in the early stages. Please remind your students that their resident assistant can assist them if they are uncomfortable in expressing concerns. However, your student has to be willing to participate and possibly compromise in order to resolve conflicts. Now, another area of interest we know is of utmost importance to you and your student is in the area of safety in the residence halls. It's important that you and your student remember that we are a small city and our initiatives are only as effective as the people that use them. This means taking full advantage of our triple barrier access card key system. Barrier 1 requires residents use their swipe card to gain entry into their designated building as all of our residence hall entrance doors are locked 24-7. Barrier 2 occurs when residents enter into the elevator. They again must use their swipe card to activate the elevator's floor designation system. And lastly, Barrier 3 requires residents to use their key to access their personal space. For residents who forget or lose their swipes, and or visitors to the building, there are call boxes located outside of each residence hall that connect to the 24-hour service desk. The 24-hour service desk is another important feature as it pertains to the safety and security of our residence halls. 
Our students, whom we refer to as community assistants or CAs that work at the service desk, serve in a number of capacities. First, CAs are able to provide immediate assistance as the resident life staff member. Second, CAs issue spare keys, temporary hall access cards, and packages. Third, CAs provide general information about the hall, department, university, and or city of College Park. And fourth and finally, our CAs can connect residents or guests with on-call staff after business hours. These staff members vary in level of experience, but all play an integral role in ensuring the safety and security of the residents of our buildings. They include resident assistants, or RAs, who are undergraduate students who live in the halls. RAs are usually the first point of contact for students on their floors. They are trained in referrals to university resources, leading programs and activities for the residents, and mediating conflicts and problems. Resident directors, or RDs, are full-time professional staff who have earned a degree and live on campus. RDs supervise the RAs and are responsible for approximately 500 residents. Lastly, community directors, or CDs, are full-time professional staff with master's degrees and three or more years of full-time residence hall management experience. CDs supervise the resident directors and play a critical role in selecting and evaluating all staff. If that weren't enough, Resident Life also employs 75 additional full-time professional staff members who are available to answer questions and be a support to your student. So that's what we provide as far as safety and security of your students in our halls. Now, let's talk a little bit about what we expect from your students as residents of our halls. First, we expect students to look out for one another. Second, students should always lock their doors and carry their ID and keys. Third, students should not let people into the halls they do not know. They should make sure all doors close behind them and never prop doors open. Next, students are and must be responsible for their guests. And finally, if students see something, they need to say something. Again, our safety and security initiatives and even those discussed by UMPD in their presentation are only as effective as the people that use them. Students must play their part. While we're on the subject of students playing their part, there are some general campus and residence hall rules that we need you to reinforce with your student. First, UMD is a smoke-free campus. You can find out more information about designated smoking locations and or assistance with quitting smoking on the university website. Second, our alcohol policy states that residents must be 21 to possess or drink alcoholic beverages in their room, and they cannot provide alcohol to persons who are underage. Third, our drug policy states the possession or use of illegal drugs, including marijuana, may result in the loss of housing and suspension from the university. And fourth, all students must complete and submit their immunization paperwork to the University Health Center. Our other residence hall rules can be found in the Community Living Handbook located on our website. One final note about our residence hall rules before we move on to all the exciting events we have planned for your students after they move in, the university has a responsible action policy in which we encourage students to seek assistance if they are worried about a friend who has been drinking or using illegal drugs. The policy provides relief from disciplinary action if a student under the influence of alcohol or drugs calls for medical assistance for a friend or him or herself. This policy hopes to encourage students to make good choices about safety of themselves and or their fellow Terps. All right, now on to our opening events that we enthusiastically refer to as Fall Welcome. So as you can see, Fall Welcome events begin for most of your students the day they arrive. They're an exciting combination of events and entertainment during opening weekend for your students to kick off their Terp career. Most fall welcome events begin after 3 p.m. on move-in days and are a great way for students to meet with their floor mates, meet their RA, and go to dinner as a community. Some of the events include New Student Welcome, which is the official welcome of the freshman class by UMD's president. Welcome to the Big Show is hosted by the Department of Resident Life, University Athletics, and the Residence Hall Association, which introduces students to UMD athletic teams and traditions, including the Maryland Fight Song and Chants. Other events include a dance party, hypnotists, movies on the mall, and rock climbing. The best part? Everything's free, and they're giveaways. 
Are you excited? We are. We really do love opening and fall welcome. Well, sadly, we're coming to the end of our presentation, but before we wrap, we want to make sure you're aware of some more important opening and closing dates. Again, August 24th and 25th, fall semester move-in. November 21st, residence halls close at 7 p.m. for Thanksgiving break. November 26th, residence halls reopen at 10 a.m. December 19th, residence halls close at 7 p.m. for winter break. January 21st, residence halls reopen at 10 a.m. for spring semester. March 16th, residence halls close at 7 p.m. for spring break. March 25th, residence halls reopen at 10 a.m. And May 18th, residence halls close at 7 p.m. for the academic year. These dates are published on our website and in the STEP brochure. We ask that you and your student pay close attention to the 7 p.m. residence hall closing time as you prepare and make travel arrangements. With that, we leave you with a short move-in video. We hope that you've enjoyed this parent presentation video. Our goal was to answer some of your questions and give you additional insights into our program. We do have a list of frequently asked questions available on our fall move-in page of our website that provides more detail than we were able to capture today. Otherwise, remember, there are multiple ways for you to contact us and we encourage you to do so. Thank you for your time and we look forward to meeting you and your student in August.